Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking uh, looking towards Saturday. I mean, it, this must be a, a big game if uh, Gladiators has been postponed. <laughs> yeah, but there's no escaping me, is there? Um, <laughs> it's still on at the same time slot. Yeah, um, well, it is a big game, isn't it? FA Cup quarter final. It's 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 going to be great. I, I'm I'm really looking forward to it, and it's not the foregone conclusion that a lot of people on the outside think it will be. I mean, you know that, I know that. Um, it could be very, very close. It could, it could be a belter, actually. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I, I was talking to you at the last round against Blackburn. Mm. I mean, we went through every single emotion in that game. And by the end of it, I think Eddie Howe said in his press conference that, you know, he feels like he needs a drink after that. Mm. But um, this game, um, it could, as you say, go all the way to the end again. Yeah, I, I, that Blackburn tie, it's one of, if not my favourite game that I've been to this season. I just thought, I, I thought it had everything. I mean, Blackburn played, as you've seen with results before and since, they've played so far above themselves, gave it a real game. And and it just shows you, doesn't it? That's, it, it, it's getting, it's getting less frequent now, but it just shows that this competition still does throw up. Every round there's something, every round there's something and you don't know where it's going to come. Um, and, and yeah, that was that was terrific. Um, th this has this has every chance. So Newcastle have already put them out of one cup this season. Um, look at the game in the Premier League at St James's that City only won very late on, and that was thanks to Kevin De Bruyne coming on. And by all reports, he probably won't play this weekend. So that that's a big bonus for Newcastle. Um, and and I think back to last season as well, the start of last season, the three three draw. At St. Yeah. James's. So if, if any if any team can give Manchester City a problem in a one-off, I think Crystal Palace do every time they play them. Um, and, and and Brentford do nearly every time they play them. And, and Newcastle certainly do. And that's been the case for quite a few years. I know Newcastle have got a rotten record against City, particularly away in Manchester, but not in the Cups. And yeah. and, and just, just occasionally not in the one-offs. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned that sort of the magic of the the cup line. I mean, obviously you did the Maidstone game at Ipswich mm. as well, uh, but this game it's almost like Newcastle are the underdog. There's no mm. escape in that, I don't think. Yeah, which, which is it's a different scenario, isn't it? From well, maybe I mean the Fulham game, I suppose, was a fifty-fifty clash, but in the other two rounds, certainly not. Sunderland didn't lay a glove on them. Blackburn certainly did. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little bit of a game changer. There, there genuinely is. It's a horrible cliche. I don't like it really. But it, it, from the outside, to those of us on the outside, it, 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 there's nothing to lose for Newcastle. I guess on the inside, of course, there is because once again, it's the last chance of getting something. European qualification by the league looks a long way off. It's not impossible, but it looks a long way off at the moment. So actually, there is. There is quite a bit of pressure on it. It doesn't matter who you're drawn against. If you're going to do something in the competition, you're probably going to have to play this lot or Liverpool at some point. So, yeah, you know, yeah. Ne you never know. Yeah. And, and I mean, Eddie Howe, he's referenced it, hasn't he? He keeps saying the cup, there's so much riding on it. And th this season could be, it could either fizzle out for Newcastle or, you know, if they won the cup, which feels a, mile, a million miles away at the minute. You know, it's, it's parades in the city. It's yeah, statues but, of Eddie Howe. It it could but, change dramatically. It it could, but think back to last season. You know, actually at a final, and it didn't yeah. happen. I know it was yeah. it was the lesser one of the two, without a doubt. But um, you know, it didn't happen. Um, this is only the quarter final, and you've got the the champions of the Premier League, Europe, and the world away from home. So it couldn't be any harder than this, could it? So um. Yeah, it's important not to take too many steps ahead, but it's just good to hear, for the first time in a long time, a, a Newcastle manager acknowledging just how important any cup, but particularly this one, would yeah. be. Um, it, it should have been the case forever, quite frankly, and I, I don't like the idea of any manager, um, regardless of league position, sort of not not oh, it's more important we stay in the Premier League. I understand that commercially and all that. It's more important, so we're going to do this and we're going to do this. And actually, this season, I keep all the stats and all the Premier League teams and a few other teams as well that are of interest to me. And, you know, I update them religiously every Sunday and Monday. And looking at the lineups this year, it tends to have been a stronger... Right from the early days, the Premier League managers seem to have put out a bit of a stronger team, whether that yeah. be Man City, who actually Pep Guardiola always does. 
he actually does put importance on it. But they all seem to have done to me a little bit more than in in maybe recent years. And um, I, I I just love this. I've always loved this competition. I I, I still think it's the best thing. And you, you're right to reference that Ipswich Maidstone game. That's another one of my favorite. So there you go. The last two rounds of the cup have served up two of my favorite games of the season so far. Uh, yeah. And in the third round, I was at Arsenal Liverpool, and that wasn't bad either. That had its fair bit of drama. So every round we've had we've had an absolute belter live on the telly. So um, lo- hope that continues. I don't mind if it goes the whole distance. I know it's a late finish again, but I, I don't mind at all if it goes the whole distance because uh, that always means there's a bit of jeopardy and a lot of excitement. Totally, and and the fact that. It's- it's you know a match of the day live. The, the whole country's watching in the FA Cup. It just it, it pulls everybody in, doesn't it? And mm. I guess in every living room, you know, your voice is going to be booming around the room, and everything's come to a standstill. We mentioned gladiators getting postponed <laughs> and things like that, and you know when it goes to extra time, the, the news gets delayed and stuff like that. Is this why the FA Cup is just well, so important and must? It, it, it is. I, I believe it is, um, and it and it and it will be, hopefully forever. Uh, not knockout football special. I, I whilst I do love the Champions League and the European competitions, the Europa League, the Conference League. I, I, I like what that brings. I like to, to use a word. Of, sort of the exotic nature we don't see these teams that often but actually that's what makes it special that's why I wouldn't really want a Super League because it makes it special playing these teams sort of on a rare occasion um, but that to me has been and even more so next year with the Champions League the, the new format of it ah, we have enough league football and a lot of games that just yeah they pay the rent but th- there's no jeopardy there's no yeah. ultimate sanction at the end of it and, and a knockout competition I, I, I love knockout football I think it's great and it's the great leveller as well I love the fact that the draw is still, despite this pressure put on, oh, we, we need them seeding, we need the little teams at home to the big teams. It look, No, you know what? If that comes out, it comes out. A free yeah. draw is brilliant. The draw's excitement. Anybody can get anybody at any stage. So, you know, you can have Arsenal-Liverpool in the third round, which could have been the final. You've got it straight away. As soon as the big guns come in, you've got that to hit you. And and I love the fact that there's... A, and, and then you get Ipswich Maidstone. And at first, TV companies think, oh, we won't have that. We needed Maidstone at home. Oh, no, it can still happen. And yeah. it still does happen. So I, I, I love, I've always loved it. And I, I grew up on it. You know, I'm, I grew up watching York City and one of my abiding memories, well, one of my key football memories was when they played Arsenal in the fourth round, uh, the fifth, the, yeah, fourth round in um, 1985. 1-0, Keith Houch in penalty late on. Um, drew Liverpool in the next round. I queued through the night with my mates, queuing around the corner from the ground, around the barracks from two in the morning. And then we drew Liverpool again in the fifth round the following year. Yeah, you know, and so the FA Cup to us, it's kind of all we've got. Yeah, um, you, you know, you're never going to do anything now, especially now we're down in the non-league. It becomes especially important. Um, and my dad was at pretty much every game. Funnily enough, it goes back to Newcastle of of York City's best ever run in 1955 when they right. got to the semis. Yeah, lost to Newcastle at Hillsborough, wow. uh, and he went to the final actually that year as well. Um, yeah. He was a massive Jackie Milburn fan for for obvious reasons. Um, so um, he, he, I, I was sort of brought up on these stories. He actually went the following year as well. He went to see Man City Birmingham in '56 when Bert Trautmann broke his neck. So my whole football schooling as a kid have been on these stories of these legendary figures, uh, yeah. and it all comes back to this this one competition. And and we're still bitter in York about 1955 because I'm told by everybody that <laughs> Arthur Bottom scored a perfectly good goal and it crossed the line and. Obviously, no technology there, no only path A newsreels. So, uh, York should have been in the final against Man City. In Newcastle, it wouldn't have been 1955. <laughs> wow, yeah, history history <laughs> could, could be completely different then, I guess. Yeah. And, and, yeah, I mean, that brings me on perfectly to the sort of next question. I mean, every time you, you come up to Newcastle, um, you know that this city it's just crying out for that domestic piece of silverware, mm. you know. It's gone on so long now and... You know, I, I I was always confident in the nineties we we would win something eventually mm. in my lifetime. Mm. But like I've, I've questioned that a few times now. Um, but now there seems to be a little bit of hope, and Eddie Howe could be the guy that delivers that eventually. I, I hope he is. I hope he is. Not not just not necessarily for Newcastle United. You know, there's plenty of other teams that have just as much a legitimate claim to win the cup. But but for him, um, because I, I I'm still marveling at. at a wonderful job that he's done. Um, you know, the mon- we know the money's there, but they can't spend it for financial fair play reasons and all that sort of stuff. Um, and he just keeps ploughing away and doing the job. And, and 
you hear the stories on the outside, oh, he's got to win the cup this year because they haven't qualified for the Champions League. Well, that was two years minimum ahead of schedule doing that. Yeah. So I, I don't think that's necessarily true. I hope it's not, yeah. um, especially with the draw in the quarterfinals. But no, I, yeah, I, I'd like it to happen. And New, Newcastle are kind of, the, I suppose, they've become the torchbearers for the importance of the FA Cup because I, I would urge younger people who may be with the advent of the Premier League, haven't been brought up like we were on the cup final being the one live game that you saw a season. Yeah. And the third round draw huddling around your radio at school on a Monday lunchtime. Yeah, that was all excitement. That helps educate you in football and bring you up with the excitement of football. They don't have that these days. It's so readily accessible. Well, that brings another argument, doesn't it? Free to air and what have you. But yeah. to, to so many people, it, there's so much of it around and the, the Premier League and what have you, that maybe it's it's sort of, in some people's eyes, lessened in importance. But you look at Newcastle and clubs like it, and you know, look at Wolves, they're in the quarterfinals as well. You know, Brighton, who've, who've never won the thing, but got got there to the final. Um, this is this is really important. Newcastle are a different, a different case, maybe, because you never know in years to come, they might have a chance of winning the league and becoming champions. But you, Brighton's aren't, I don't think. You know, yeah. unless there's a Leicester happens again. So this yeah. is it. This is the one, this is the one really big thing. And it, it's so important, so important that that it keeps keeps being important to people. Um, and, yeah. and when we show it live on the BBC and get massive audience figures, it yeah. shows, I think, that it is. Yeah, no, definitely. And obviously Man City, the stadium itself, that was where you'd done the famous commentary when Aguero <laughs> scored. Yeah. Did, what, what's it like for you when you go to Man City? Is it just another day in the office or do you... Does, is that always going to be with you when you go to the Etihad Stadium that that moment? It's not with me all the time, no. Because, um, funnily enough, that's not that's not an enormous career highlight. Right. Um, the game itself was, yeah, the occasion. Yeah. yeah, I think my commentary could have been a bit better. It was just a lot of shouting and screaming. <laughs> um, also, obviously, I'm, I'm doing it live. It makes no difference to me, but it was shown in on highlights on match of the day later that night and it was live on Sky. So I'm not associated with that commentary. People right. don't associate me with that particularly. Uh -huh. um, so it's not, it's not, it's not what I would say a highlight. So it's not something I think about. And I'm there so often, just like at St. James's so often that I don't really, I don't think about it. The, the games come so thick and fast. You know, I'm doing yeah. three, four commentaries a week that you don't really hang on to, to the memories. You look forward at what's coming next. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I listen back to games and, and you sort of think, blimey, um, was I was I at that? And you can't sort of remember being there. I mean, I, I'll just have a look now. I've, this is this is really geeky, but I'm a commentator, so I'm allowed to be. Uh, <laughs> it was pointed out to me a while back how many games I'd done. Um, our match, the, the, the guy that wrote us the the commentaries, one of our editors, Andrew Clement, he keeps numbers on everything, and he told me about three, four years ago how many games I'd done. So I've kept a note ever since. Yeah. So. This game on Saturday will be my 1,293rd commentary for BBC television. Wow. Um, 1,300 will come up next month with Liverpool v Crystal Palace, all being well off touch wood. Uh -huh. so there's a lot of games, and so you don't really... You, I, I, I sort of like, on to the next, and you sort of concentrate on the next, and you, you do forget about some, which is, again, we come back full circle to the FA Cup, because the ones I can remember, and stick out this year are actually the last three rounds. Yeah. They're the games that have really stuck out in my memory of this season's highlights. Yeah, yeah. And what what about um the the sort of the research that you guys I mean you're talking there about the sort of geeky side of it. I've, I've seen like you guys have reams and reams of notes. How much um effort goes into that and how important is it to get those little the, those tiny little golden nuggets um during the um, yeah, it's it's it's, vital. it's absolutely vital. It's the old yeah. Boy Scouts thing, isn't it? And you know, fail to prepare, prepare to fail, and all that. And and it's true. And it, it's just it, it takes up it's, it's 90, 80, 90 percent of my work time is prepping games. I'm I'm already prepping. In fact, I've just done some prep this morning on Denmark for the, they've just named their squad for the next internationals. Um, I'll be covering them at the Euros, so I've just done a good couple of hours on their squad this morning. Um, and you, you're constantly doing it. I liken it to paint the job of painting the fourth bridge. You know what? Once you've yeah. finished at one end, you've got to start at the other again. And yeah. it's it, it is non-stop. But 
it's not woe is me. Oh, look at me. I'm working seven days a week. Yeah, I am. It's what I do. It's not work. Yeah. I do it anyway, probably. It, <laughs> it's, it's not work. It doesn't feel like work. It's just what I do. It's just my, my life. And yeah, you're constantly prepping games. I've, I've just got my rotor for, well, up to the midpoint of April. And I've already got notes on every game that I'll be doing just to fill in along the way and keep mm-hmm. updating. Um, and it, it never ends, but it's, you've got to have it. And, and the process of doing it puts it in your head so that hopefully on a match day, it's no more than a glance down. You like yeah. to have them there pl- pl- plastered around your monitors, but yeah. generally if you've done the prep, you won't need to look at it too often. Mm-hmm. So it'll, just, mm-hmm. it'll just come, it's stuck. It's it's an exam. Every match is an exam, basically. And and the prep is the revision for that exam. Yeah, yeah. Not brilliant. And just um, a look at some of Newcastle's star players. I mean, Alexander Isak's had a great season. Anthony yeah. Gordon. I mean, is there anyone who stands out for you as Newcastle's sort of player of the season so far? Player of the season, probably Gordon. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been really impressed with him. I'll be totally honest, I'm not sure I was a massive fan when he was at Everton. Um, And when there was all the talk of a big money move to Chelsea initially, I was thinking, I'd I'd let him go. I don't don't get it. But I think I wasn't factoring in the fact that he's he's a young lad. Um, And it took him a while, second half of last season. I I must admit, I thought, why have Newcastle signed him? What's he going to do? And then this season, he's, he's gone on. He's gone on. Harvey Barnes' injury, I guess, helped him early doors as well, cement his place in the team. Um, big fan of Harvey Barnes, by the way. I, I think yeah. he will be a player. If he gets uh-huh. an injury-free run, he will be a player. And I admit to bias because one of my friends and heroes is his dad, who oh, was a brilliant finisher for York. <laughs> and and I tell you what, if Harvey can finish as well as his dad, I'd pick him centre-forward sometimes. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm, I'm a big fan of Gordon. Um, he'll make the Euros squad, I'm sure. Hopefully that knee injury isn't too bad. And um, it'll be all right. I think the last report was it wasn't as bad as we thought. So um, yeah, yeah. You know, ho- hopefully that's the case. So yeah, I think he's been the standout player. Um, and I always enjoy watching Bruno play. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you can't not. Um, I would argue he's the better of the two Brunos in the Premier League, but that's a, that's a diff- that's a different argument. Um, <laughs> and, and actually, <laughs> the other one, the other one, and I, I think every Newcastle fan will will go along with me with this. Um, my dad would have loved him as well. I mean, sadly, my dad passed away in 2005, but but mm-hmm. he would have loved Miguel Almiron. My, my yeah. dad would have adored him. Yeah. Just for, just for the sheer infectiousness of how he plays football. He's not the greatest player in the world, but oh, if, if, I, I wish I could do something that seems to bring as much happiness as he has yeah. every time he goes on the football field. Yeah. Uh, well, I do actually, but maybe I just don't show it as as clearly as he does all the time. Yeah. No, that that smile is great, and I, I think I interviewed him last year, and um, the thing that he said to me was, for him off the pitch, um, you know, we've obviously we hear about the goldfish ball at Newcastle and players going to town and having a drink and all that, but he said the big moments for him are taking his uh, little boy to the park and having a coffee with his missus, and I think that just sums him up, you know, and. Um, the Newcastle fans, they, some of them, I've got a mixed view on mm. on on how he plays. But as you say, if if you could bottle up that enthusiasm, mm. that that would be great, wouldn't it? I mean, I know I know he's not popular with Newcastle fans, but he's a really good bloke, Steve Bruce. And I remember I, whenever I asked Steve Bruce while he was manager about Almiron, he'd smile before he answered. Yeah. So he clearly has that impact on everybody else around him as well. Um, yeah. You know, it just just in fact, another another player I'm a massive fan of and it is Dan Byrne, and that's purely and that is purely because I like to see people, and I don't mean this in a patronising way, but beat the odds. He doesn't look like a left back. He shouldn't be a left back, and I guess he isn't. He's a centre back, really. But you yeah. put him there, and people go on about oh, he's no pace and he's easy to beat. Well, tell Eddie how that, and I don't think I don't think he'd agree with you. Uh, yeah, I, I just like to see people beat the odds and prove people wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, I guess this game for him is, is perfect, isn't it? Because he he is kind of a underdog player, isn't he? He was at Blythe Spartans when he was a kid, and yeah. Darlington, and he's he's earned that chance to play in a big game like this, I suppose. That and way. three years ago, he got um he got the winning goal for Brighton against City in the Premier League down at Brighton. So um, you know, you never know. He might he, he could he could do that again. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still think City will win, and if if everything's right for them, they will. Yeah, um, but 
I, I, I don't think it's the foregone conclusion everybody's making it out. Um, got to stop the big lad, mind you. He's yeah. Quite handy, that number nine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's not bad at all, is he? Um, I mean, yeah, just finally to still Rabo, I mean, prospect of penalties. I mean, <laughs> with everything that's happening in the Cup this season, you know, wouldn't, you couldn't rule it out, I guess. But um, Newcastle... Well, have already got a little bit of experience with that. And absolutely, you, you... absolutely. They won the last one, um, which I believe is only their fourth shootout win ever in 15 attempts. Yeah. So um, that, that's going the right way. City have won one and lost one this season. Um, very early on. They um, they lost to Arsenal in the... Oh, hang on, sorry. Clicked sorry. On... There we go. Clicked on the wrong thing. Um, yeah, they lost to Arsenal in the Community Shield, but then they beat Sevilla in the Super Cup. Early doors. Ah, oh, you never know, do you? It's 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 a it's that's a that's a complete lottery. But I'll, I'll certainly be, I'll be very happy if it goes to penalties because that means we've got a, a heck of an audience watching and hopefully people are enjoying it. And I won't be too upset about gladiators being missed for a week. It puts it back a week. It makes the final even more exciting when the gladiators final comes around. 